Hi friends, welcome back. We are in the second chapter of First Peter this week and we're on day one, page uh, 82 of the workbook. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, uh, through Peter, you're encouraging us to love one another. God, help us as we open up your word now to love you, to know you, to love you, and to be able to love others as you've called us to. Thanks, God. Amen. All right, let's read uh, verse one. So, Put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. Okay, wow, there's so much to dig into here. And as always, we begin by just noticing some things, asking questions, and right off the bat, I notice the first word, so. <laughs> Sometimes it's just these little words that we need to take notice of. And so my question is, so what? Well, that so points back to where we left off last week. It points all the way back to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 22 and 23, where uh, Peter did, he's exhorting, he's exhorting the scattered church to love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Why? Since you have been born again. So since you have been born again, uh, here's what you do. Here's, here's what you need to do. Here's how we love one another. We must put away all malice and all deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. And so that's what I do. Sometimes I just put, put away what? You see, I have so what, put away what? And I answer those questions. You know, I dug into, and maybe some of you did too, like it, it really doesn't hurt if uh, maybe some of these words we don't use every day, like malice, deceit, um, maybe a little bit more, hypocrisy, envy, slander. It doesn't hurt to take some time and ponder those. Basically, what is Peter saying? He's saying, put away everything that's sinful. Put away everything that's evil. Put away malice, uh, I defined as deprived or de depravity, perversion, um, we might remember Paul. Some of you have studied Ephesians with me. Ephesians 4.22 is a cross-reference. And Paul says, Put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. Uh, so, you know, one of these that stood out to me, I, I mean, I think we kind of have to ask God to search us and know us and uh, you know, shine his Holy Spirit light over every crevice of our heart to see what we need to put away here. <laughs> because uh, most days there's something here I need to put away. Uh, one that jumped out at me was hypocrisy. When I looked that up, that means acting acting. And so that stood out to me. A lot of times, I think, especially those of us who've been a part of the church, we kind of have this idea, like we know how to play church, right? We know how to dress up and play church. But uh, Peter's saying something more. No, we got to put that aside. We're looking for, as he said last week, earnest, love one another earnestly 
from a pure heart. So this is what we have to do. We need to put away all of these things. These vices are the vices that destroy relationships. And uh, he's calling us, he's telling us that we, when we drink of the pure spiritual milk, uh, when we taste Christ and taste how good the Lord is, um, and this isn't just an individual thing, but we now join into this community. And so in order to have genuine fellowship, right, and to be connected as these living stones uh, with Christ and with one another, we got we to gotta put all of these vices aside. So... Um, that's, that's just verse one. Verse two, that jumped out to me too. Uh, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, and that by it you may grow up into salvation. And then verse three, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. So like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk. So long jumped out to me, friends. Uh, that is the one imperative here in this passage, right? Long. What does that mean? Um, to desire, to crave, right? Um Let's see, I was looking to see if I had another cross-reference for that. It doesn't look like I do. Uh, but yeah, let's think about what does it mean to crave something. And I think, you know, we can we can say, all right, we notice long for. What does it mean? It means to desire or crave. And I think this is, I mean, when I think of crave, I think of longing for something deeply. When I think of a newborn infant longing for pure spiritual milk, like newborns, if you're if you've been around a newborn, like they long for mama's milk, right? I mean, they cry and they will cry and cry and cry until they are satisfied by, uh, by it, by the milk. And so I think that's what we're after here. Like, um, we, we crave it until we're satisfied. And so an application for that, I mean, that takes me to application. Okay, number one, what do I need to put off? Number two, what am I craving today? Like beyond that big bag of chocolate chips that's downstairs in the pantry, you know, uh, we we crave fleshly things, right? Uh, sometimes we crave food, we crave sex, we crave uh, we crave money, we crave power, we crave um, attention, we crave uh, people liking us and and social media likes and all those kind of earthly things. This is so much more. Uh, Peter is saying, crave pure spiritual milk. Well, what's this? Here's another question. What's the pure spiritual milk? And I don't think there's, I, I don't think Peter has any negative connotation. Like I think in some other passages of scripture, we might say, oh, well, you're immature if you're craving spiritual milk. No, I think uh, this is more more than that, and that we need to look at verse 3, the context of the passage. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Um, there's a, this, the, the cross-reference here is Psalm 34, 8. Peter is definitely referencing that verse. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And so I just, you know, I wrote below that, have you taken refuge in him? And that's Peter's question here. Like, make sure, make sure you have taken refuge in him. Make sure you have tasted that you have, um, and, and think about that. Like, this is more, tasting is more than seeing, right? Uh, sometimes I think I've prayed a lot. Lord, help us to see you today as we open up your word. Help us to hear you. What is Peter saying? He's saying, 
taste, taste and see. Tasting, uh, tasting is beyond seeing and hearing. There's something about, there's something internalizing. You know, we internalize something when we taste it. So have we internalized Christ? Has uh, have, 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 yeah, have we believed in him? It kind of goes back to believing in him that we talked about last week, believing and um, putting our trust, putting our confidence in him. Have we done that? If we've done that, then we should desire to put away all of these vices and we should desire, we should crave more of Christ, more of Christ, more of um, the word, uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and more of, I think, more of his word, because when we, when we study this, we also get a taste of him and who he is and how we obey him. So, friends, wow, I didn't even get to uh, this becoming the, the living stones, the corners and Christ being the cornerstone and how we become the spiritual house. Uh, we do that. You know, this isn't just about me, 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 me. Uh, this message that Peter has for the scattered church and for us is about we, 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 we. <laughs> like this is how we uh, uphold one another. And uh, like we want to encourage one another. Come on, friend. Let's put away this uh, immature stuff, these vices. Let's together crave Christ. Let's be this spiritual house. Let's be built into a spiritual house. And and that's one thing I want to say. I just said built, and it reminds me that I put down here, look, these aren't heaped. These aren't rocks just heaped in a pile. These aren't rocks just randomly placed. No, these are rocks being built into a spiritual house. And uh, the, the foundation, that cornerstone is Jesus Christ. So, um, wow, main point, you know, we got to talk about that for just a minute because that's one of our rules for studying the letters. Uh, I, I've got down put off, <laughs> crave, and be built into this spiritual house, be this uh, holy priesthood that Peter is exhorting us to and know that there is going to be, even if we don't see it here, there is going to be honor in it someday. All right. Um, I think I touched on some applications. Friends, I'm going to leave it there for you to ponder and think about. I look forward to discussing this with you as we come together next week.